What's up, everybody? It's the Common Sense Investor coming at you with another video. And in this video, I'm going to just kill the elephant in the room, okay? We're going to talk about the real, real, real reason for payment for order flow. And the reason I've chose this for th this morning to talk about is, Dougie, I was going to let you off the fucking hook, dog. I went through the lawsuit, and I'm cherry-picking what claims that I believe we could prove and which ones we can't. And so I removed Doug completely from the lawsuit and virtue. And I said, you know what? Can't prove nothing against them. So I'll just let them go. But then after I watched the debate on payment for order flow between Doug Sifu from virtue and Sheila Bear from F former FDIC chairperson. Boy, they got some alphabet people out there, don't they? <sighs> Spoiler alert. Doug Sifu whooped that ass, and she knows she was defeated in her argument. You'll see her face, and you'll hear her stumble across her words in just a moment. Let's listen to her try to defend retail against payment for order flow. Let's take a listen. Former FDIC Chair Sheila Baer calling for a crackdown on payment for order flow in an op-ed published today in the Financial Times. Baer saying the practice lacks transparency and hurts public markets. Sheila Baer is with us live tonight. We're also going to hear from Virtue CEO Doug Sifu. He's taking the other side of this debate. His company is one of the wholesalers that pays for order flow. Says an SEC crackdown would be absurd. He will make his case straight ahead. But we first want to start off by talking about the op-ed. That Stop. Real quick, I hate when I have to interrupt the interviews like this, but it's something important that you need to pay attention to. Look at Doug Sifu's body language. He is focused. He is down there. He's listening to every word his opponent has to say. He's ready for a fight. Let's keep going. That is getting a lot of buzz today. Um, Sheila, welcome back to Fast Money. It's great to have you, have you with us. How does it hurt the public markets? Well, it, 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 it impedes competition, so you don't have to publish the best price to draw an order. You just pay some broker to send the order your way, and then you decide whether you want to take it or not. If you take it, you've got to provide a little bitty uh, bit of uh, incremental price improvement on whatever the, the national uh, best bid ask is, or, or you can just send it to an exchange. Uh, it's your option. But that you know, it impedes competition. You don't have to compete based on getting the order based on your quote you're going to hide your trading interests. And that's exactly what's going on. There are two trading interests. Some of that's being reflected in payments to brokers as opposed to giving narrower spreads to uh, retail traders. Mm -hmm. I know that's hard <laughs> for them to understand. They like the commission-free trading, but really, believe me, they're still paying for it just with poor quality executions. So, so you're saying that it's not transparent in that retail traders, when you're getting a well, free trade, you're actually paying you for are. it by not getting the best price? You're not getting the best price. Yeah. Exactly right. You're, they, they are hiding their trading interest. They don't have to display it. They don't have to publish it to you because they can pay for your order. They don't have to attract your order by offering the best price. So they're giving you an inferior execution, taking some of the money they would have been willing to pay and giving it to your broker. That's really what's if, going on. If a retail investor doesn't like this payment for order flow, Sheila, they could um, go to a broker where they have the option um, to That's turn right. that off. And so why well, is this an issue? I mean, it's it's up to the consumer, right, to do his or her homework and yeah. decide what, uh, you know, if they want to pay for it, in whether it be a, a trading commission or pay for it in terms mm -hmm. of maybe not as good of a price. Stop, people. Listen, that ended the debate right there. Now, Melissa Lee didn't have no business jumping in. That's This is the debate between her and Doug Sifu, and Melissa's like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't it ultimately up to the retail investor? If they are with a payment for order flow company like Robinhood, then aren't they agreeing to pay in on the back end instead of the front end with a commission? You can't beat that argument, people. It's as simple as that. There is no way you can stand and say, you don't get the best execution. That response is, this switch fucking brokers, but let's keep going. Well, that's that's true. There are some brokers like Fidelity that, that do not pay for order flow, and they also don't charge commissions. So that may be the best of both worlds. Sure, uh, you can you can make that choice, but look, this is an inherent conflict of interest. I mean, should our regulations 
permit this kind of conduct. The, the current situation hurts the, the quality and the, and the depth of the markets because, again, it doesn't require market makers to compete based on price. If they had to compete on price, you would see more liquid markets and narrower spreads. So there is a, a, a larger public policy issue in terms of the impact on market structure. But also, it's just an apparent conflict of interest. But usually, those things are frowned upon or, or if not uh, at least made illegal by regulators. You know, a while back, the CEO of Robinhood, Vlad Tenev, um, Sheila, has suggested that perhaps lit exchange or public exchanges should be able to price in fractions of pennies, and that could actually yeah. increase the comp competition between them and wholesalers. Do you think that could be a solution, or does the whole system sort yeah. of need to be revamped? Yeah, so that kind of doubles down the other way. So basically say, okay, the exchange uh, market makers can also just uh, step in front of a published uh, quote with very minimal price improvement. I, I think that would really hurt uh, the depth and transparency of the markets. And it'd be an insider's game for everybody. No, I think we should go the opposite way. You know, maybe have a minimum check for off exchange, a uh, minimum uh, requirement for price improvement for off exchange market makers. That would be a, a, a half ground. Even better disclosure about what they're paying to their brokers uh, would, would be improved from, from what we've got now. You know, another thing that I would hope retail traders would think about is when, when these wholesalers pay for your order, they are not just paying to, to get a little, you know, extra spread from you because they're not giving you the best bid ass. They're not giving you what they're truly willing to pay. But also they're getting your information. And these, these retail orders are now moving stock prices. It didn't used to be the case. It used to be the institutional business, which they had the, you know, the information advantage. But now, you know, as we've seen with GameStop and these other MIM stocks, the, these retail orders will move markets. And so, you know, having that inside look, that first look by paying for that order flow is also benefiting these big institutions. That's in your information. Your broker is selling it to a big market maker and they're benefiting from it. Okay, so now she's introduced a couple of different arguments. Number one, that the payment for order flow market makers will front run your order. They get your information. What does she mean by that? That means that Robinhood will bundle up all of your orders and let's say there's 26 million shares of AMC that retail has decided to buy because they're buying the dip. When they front run, what she's saying is Citadel gets that information and Citadel will purchase AMC because they know that the order flow is about to show a $25 million order. Is that true? No. All right, that's why it's it's a weak argument, and it's not true, and I'm going to show y'all how it's not true, but then she has to revert back to her, well, they're not getting the best executed price. See? So poor old Sheila's on the ropes. Um, some would say, Sheila, that the retail investor hasn't had it this good in a long time. Yeah, they are they actually it. are they actually being? I mean, do you think that they're actually being cheated yeah. by payment for order flow? And we're talking about fractions so, of pennies here. Yeah, well, if you do a lot of trading, that <laughs> pretty soon it's real money. Well, nobody wants to go back to twenty five dollar commissions. No, the fact that we have very low commissions, and I think some, you know, there are some brokers who are not doing payment for order flow and also not charging commissions, you can still make money off of trading, you know, offer the best bid and price, be, be smarter than everybody else in terms of this trading sucks. You can make money that way. But it, it, it's, you know, it's, it's a conflict. And they are, you know, it's just, they're not getting reduced costs, they're getting less transparent cost. All right, Melissa just introduced a new argument there. She said, well, I, this is good for retail investors. Zero commission free brokers all right and sheila's response she said see she goes to stutter I, 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 and, and she knew she lost the argument and so what do you do next she reverts back to her argument but you don't get a transparent price bullshit and i'm gonna tell y'all why in just a moment if you had it your way sheila would this be banned would be would payment for order flow well, be I, eliminated I, from I the system in, entirely yeah, i think in it i think I think in an ideal world, market makers would draw orders based on publishing the best price, publishing the best bid ask. And yes, I think that would be the ideal world. I full, This has been going on since the 1980s. Bernie Madoff uh, pioneered it to, back when I was working for the New York Stock Exchange. So this has been around for a long time. It's, it's been a big factor in the fragmentation and less transparency in our markets. I think those are harmful. 
do I think we'll actually get a ban? Probably not. I've heard enough. I've heard enough. She's lost the argument. She just conceded that. Will there be a ban on payment for order flow? And she says, probably not. Because she don't have the right argument. So I'll tell you what I'll do. Just for shits and giggles and because I ain't got nothing else to do, I'll tell you what. Doug, I challenge you to a debate. Debate me, motherfucker. And I'll even go into the lion's den and I'll let Noisy Corax moderate the fucking debate. And I promise you, when I get through with Doug Sifu and the payment for order flow situation, I will have him and payment for order flow on the mat. And I will make them bow the knee to the CSI. So with that, comment down below. Would y'all like to see me go head to head with this son of a bitch about payment for order flow? Do you want to hear me argue our position on payment for order flow against him? Comment down below. And I pray this son noisy Corax. I know you got your head up his ass. Y'all on Twitter together and commenting and tweeting with one another. Tell him I said... I'm calling his ass out to a debate. In fact, I'll even make it interesting. Let's make a wager, Doug. If I win the debate, if I can make you speechless about payment for order flow, you give me $5,000. And if you crush me in the debate, I will delete my channel. So with that, get ready, because I think we're about to get down on it, and I promise you people, I won't lose. <laughs> with that, love y'all, be blessed, and I'll see you in the next video.